Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionellos, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we will continue our discussion about pulmonary medicine. In previous videos we have talked about obstructive lung diseases. Today we have an introduction about restrictive lung diseases. If you get this introduction and lay this foundation, it's gonna be a piece of cake. Restrictive lung disease. My lungs are restricted from filling. I cannot get the air in. Symptoms, cough and dyspnea. Also known as SO. B, which stands for shorts of breath because I do not curse. I'm a good guy. With that being said, now let's get started. I have never met a medical student in my life who said, oh, I love those restrictive lung disease. This is my favorite subject to study, said no student ever. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. Just one by one, step by step, you will get better and better and better. And as Beverly Sells said, there are no shortcuts to any place worth going. It's gonna be tough, but you can do it. Lung diseases are divided into obstructive and restrictive lung diseases. Obstructive, I cannot get the air out. Restrictive, I cannot get the air in. Obstructive include asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchiectasis, bronchiolitis. Restrictive include any disease that ends in osis and related to the lung. Don't say metacosis is a restrictive. No, no, no. It's not a restrictive lung disease. It's a beautiful medical channel. But here you have cold workers pneumoconiosis, asbestosis, silicosis, berliosis, sarcoidosis, you name it. This slide summarizes all of pulmonary medicine in just one sentence. Cough and or dyspnea equals one of five categories. Here are your choices, baby. Obstructive lung disease, restrictive lung disease, pulmonary vascular abnormalities, infection, malignancy. That's it. Obstructive lung disease include asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchiectasis, bronchiolitis. Chronic bronchitis and emphysema together are called COPD. Restrictive lung disease could be parenchymal, which means the disease is in the lung itself. Plural, it's in the pleura or chest wall, neuromuscular or even in the abdomen such as ascites or organomegaly, such as hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. Okay, parenchymal such as what? Interstitial pulmonary fibrosis or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Idiopathic means we have an unknown cause. We have also pneumoconiosis, sarcoidosis, and even systemic sclerosis or scleroderma or rheumatoid arthritis, respiratory bronchiolitis associated inner Stitial lung disease, and this is associated with smoking. Don't ever forget that. So, smoke, smoking can lead to an obstructive lung disease, such as COPD, or a restrictive lung disease, such as respiratory bronchiolitis associated interstitial lung disease. If you want to know more about bronchiolitis, watch my previous video in this playlist. Plural, such as pleural diffusion or pleural thickening, chest wall kyphosis, scoliosis, kyphoscoliosis, ankylosing spondylitis pectus excavatum, pectus carniatum, etc. Neuromuscular myasthenia gravis, lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome, Guillain-Barre post-polio syndrome, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, and abdomen, as you know. Pulmonary vascular abnormalities include pulmonary embolism, very important and very dangerous, pulmonary artery hypertension, pulmonary venoclusive disease, and even vasculitides. Infections include pneumonia, big time, TB, oh no, bronchitis, especially acute bronchitis, and tracheitis, and also, in kids, croup, laryngotracheobronchitis. Malignancy such as bronchogenic carcinoma, where it arises from the bronchi or bronchioles, like this, alveolar cell cancer, where it is in the alveoli, or metastasis, which is by far the most common lung cancer, is a metastasis because all of the circulation goes to the lung. That's the job of the right side of the heart. Restrictive lung disease, what's the definition? I cannot get the air in. My lungs are restricted from filling. Same thing as restrictive cardiomyopathy. My heart cannot get the blood in. It's restricted from filling. You have decreased in all lung volumes and capacities. No wonder, because you cannot get the air in. FEV1, FVC ratio could be normal or increased. This is how you diagnose restrictive lung disease. This is step number one. Step number two is how to determine the severity of the restrictive lung disease. And this is by looking at the total lung capacity. The lower the TLC, the more severe the restrictive lung disease. 
two types of restrictive lung disease extrinsic which is not the lungs fault and intrinsic which is the lungs fault extrinsic the problem could be in the chest wall neuromuscular diaphragm pleura or even the abdomen intrinsic could be problem in the lung could be interstitial or alveolar interstitial means okay here is your lung and here is your alveolus and another alveolus between them there is connective tissue interstitial space so interstitial lung disease is here alveolar restrictive lung disease is in the alveolus such as a famous or not so famous disease called alveolar proteinosis can you give me an example of an interstitial lung disease yes interstitial pulmonary fibrosis how many obstructive lung diseases are there five asthma chronic bronchitis emphysema bronchiectasis bronchiolitis how many restrictive lung diseases are there more than 100 so are you going to discuss all of them no i have a life abraham lincoln said if i had four hours to chop down a tree i would spend the first two hours sharpening the axe that's why i spend so much time laying down the foundation because if you get this it's over baby okay restrictive lung disease are divided into extrinsic and intrinsic extrinsic easy the problem could be in the thoracic wall neuromuscular diaphragm or pleura okay thank you intrinsic intrinsic restrictive lung disease is the same thing as diffuse parenchymal lung disease or interstitial lung disease this is the first type which is parenchymal the problem is in the interstitial space between the alveoli example pulmonary fibrosis next we have non-interstitial disease and this is gonna be your nice alveolus let's first talk about the parenchymal lung disease in the interstitial space you have three types occupational and environmental idiopathic which means we are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology i.e unknown cause because doctors are super sophisticated they don't just admit it and say we do not know they say it's idiopathic which is exactly the same thing just super sophisticated to the point of being stupid and you have others these are miscellaneous group let's start with occupational and environmental you have three subtypes hypersensitivity pneumonitides organic dust induced interstitial lung disease inorganic dust induced interstitial lung disease let's start with hypersensitivity pneumonitides okay occupations farmer's lung bird fancier's lung chemical workers lung miller's lung coffee makers lung etc i'm not joking by the way organic dust such as bessinosis and this is for people who deal with cotton so the cotton industry next we have inorganic dust and this is coal worker pneumoconiosis because as you know coal is not organic asbestosis silicosis beryliosis etc then we have the idiopathic which means unknown etiology first one is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and then the second one is a combination between two diseases first one is called cryptogenic organizing pneumonia the second one is called bronchiolitis obliterans which i've talked about before in my video called bronchiolitis we call them together b-o-o-p bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia and this is called could be related to radiation or chemotherapy next we have others sarcoidosis rheumatological problems such as rheumatoid especially kaplan syndrome and of course systemic sclerosis you have langerhans cell histiocytosis and lam lymphangioleomyomatosis who named these things vasculitides such as granulomatosis with polyangiitis formerly known as wigner's and then we have eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis formerly known as churg strauss syndrome also we have eosinophilic interstitial lung disease such as allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis and eosinophilic pneumonia this is the interstitial space which is between the alveoli next we have non-interstitial diffuse which is the alveolar such as alveolar proteinosis and anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody also known as good pasture syndrome where you have bleeding from your lung called hemoptysis and bleeding from your kidney called hematuria please spend five minutes to memorize every single stinking word in this table otherwise there is no hope for you because it's gonna be brutal in the following videos let's start with the easy one the extrinsic restrictive lung disease the problem could be in the respiratory center 
chest wall, diaphragm, neuromuscular pleura, or even the abdomen, anything except for your lung, because if it's in the lung, we call it intrinsic, as we have discussed in the previous slide. Respiratory center could be due to trauma, brainstem disease, drugs, most of them except aspirin, because aspirin actually stimulates the respiratory center. Chest wall disease, such as kyphosis, which means you are like this. So here is your face, and you are looking forward like this, and your back is like this. Lower doses is the opposite. You're like a fat king in the good old movies. You are like this. You're walking like this, and you're so arrogant, son of a... All right. You are like this. This is called lower doses. Scoliosis, if you are looking at me right now, scoliosis is like this. This is scoliosis. Combine kyphosis with scoliosis, you have kyphoscoliosis. Ankylosing spondylitis is one of the seronegative spondyloarthropathies, as we will discuss in rheumatology. Obesity, especially morbid obesity. Pectus excavatum, pectus carniatum, and I have talked about these in my first or second video in this playlist. Rib fracture, flail chest, and sternal fracture. Those in red colors are medical emergencies. Diaphragm could be diaphragmatic paralysis, one or both hemidiaphragms. Neuromuscular, very important, myasthenia gravis, where the problem is in the postsynaptic neuron. It's actually not a neuron, it's a muscle, and in this muscle it has an acetylcholine receptor. In myasthenia gravis, there are antibodies inhibiting this receptor, so your muscles do not contract. That's how you end up with weak muscles called myasthenia gravis. Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome. The problem here is in the presynaptic neuron. In the presynaptic neuron, there are some calcium channels. In Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome, they are screwed. Therefore, you cannot secrete your neurotransmitter and you cannot stimulate a nerve or a muscle. If you cannot stimulate your diaphragmatic muscle, you end up with an extrinsic because it's in the, it's outside of the lung, restrictive lung disease. ALS, amyotrophic or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, horrible disease. Polio, which is a lower motor neural lesion. Thanks to the polio vaccine, it's almost gone. It's still there, but we have gone a long way. Guillain-Barré syndrome, myotonic dystrophy, also known as muscular dystrophy or myotonia. Phrenic nerve injury, hypokalemia, because when you have hypokalemia, you have muscle problem. Okay, here is the mnemonic sodium. CNS problems. Potassium is the K. You have cardiac problems. Why cardiac? Because your heart is a muscle. Hypokalemia or hyperkalemia affects the muscle. That's how you get muscle weakness. And your diaphragm is a stinking muscle. That's how you end up with an extrinsic restrictive lung disease. Hypophosphatemia for a different reason. Because you need to make ATP for energy. Adenosine triphosphate. If you do not have enough phosphate, you end up with no energy, no energy in your muscles, no energy in your diaphragm. That's how you end up with an extrinsic restrictive lung disease. Botulism, of course, in kids or in adults, in kids who consume honey and in adults who go to the store and buy like a tuna can that has like a punch or a hole there, anaerobic bacteria will come in and make it horrible. Even one milligram of this botulinum toxin is sufficient to kill you. But lucky for you, if you just put this tuna on a pan, okay, put it in a sufficient amount of heat and just stir it well, you will kill this nasty bacteria. It's deadly, but you can prevent it. Pleura, pleural thickening, pleural empyema, chronic pleurisy, abdomen, ascites, and organomegaly. Restrictive lung disease could be extrinsic and intrinsic extrinsic the problem is outside the lung intrinsic the problem is in the lung this is a very important table you will not find this on wikipedia i can tell you that i'm very humble i'm sorry wikipedia i love you okay extrinsic where is the problem it's not the lungs fault it's anything but the lung diaphragm pleura abdomen whatever intrinsic the problem is in the lung can you give me an example yes chest wall deformity kyphoscoliosis can you give me an example of intrinsic? Yep, pulmonary fibrosis. How about the vital capacity? If it's a lung disease, whatever extrinsic or intrinsic vital capacity is low, only healthy people have normal vital capacity. People who exercise and who are muscular have increased vital capacity. Total lung capacity, if it's a restrictive lung disease, my lungs are restricted from filling, it's gonna be low. 
FEV1 is gonna be low, it's a lung disease. FEV1, FBC ratio, restrictive lung disease are normal or high in either one. Residual volume, low, low. It's even lower in intrinsic lung disease because your lungs are now history. P, small AO2, low. Both of them have hypoxemia. SAO2 or oxygen saturation, look, if PAO2 is low, SAO2 is going to be low because PAO2 is the source of SAO2, like father, like son, so it's going to be low in either one. Now, here is the difference between extrinsic restrictive and intrinsic restrictive lung disease. Very important. DLCO. If the lung is normal, DLCO is normal. If the lung has a problem, DLCO is low. Flow volume loop. You have higher volumes in extrinsic lung disease. The curves are more shifted to the left. You have lower volumes in intrinsic lung disease because your lungs are now history. If you want to know more about flow volume loops, I have made a specific video about flow volume loops in this playlist. AA gradient. If the lung is normal, AA gradient is normal. If the lung has a problem, AA gradient is widened. Please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Even $1 makes a difference. You can get my PDF notes, post notes, cases, audio notes, and even the slides of this video and every other video organized in Dropbox folders. Again, patreon.com slash medicosis. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and smash like. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until next time, please be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense.